My name is Tony Ayou. I'm a mechatronics sales engineer at Saab RDS, an official MI partner. And today, I'm going to introduce you to LabVIEW. So first of all, what is LabVIEW? LabVIEW is a graphical programming interface that stands for Laboratory Virtual Instrument Engineering Workbench. This software allows non-software engineers to generate programs using the graphical programming language that is much easier than other programming languages like C++ and Python. What is LabVIEW used for? In this flowchart, we will see some type of applications that can be performed using LabVIEW. LabVIEW can be used for hardware control like benchtop instruments and PC-based acquisition cards that you plug in directly to your computer. LabVIEW allows you to capture a lot of analog and digital voltage and current measurements using a huge variety of hardware that can be used as a graphical programming environment and other subtopics that can be programmed the way we reason. I'm a very graphical learner, and so I found LabVIEW excellent for gathering my thoughts and putting them into codes. We can continuously compile codes which makes developing software much quicker than other traditional programming languages. The code is inherently parallel, which means LabVIEW code is more efficient than codes written in other languages. And within the graphical programming environment of LabVIEW, there are lots of core engineering tools available. So if we break those subjects down into subcategories with programming environments, you can program on Windows, Linux, Mac, or even embedded systems such as Raspberry Pi, real-time operating systems, or tools and even FPGAs. The core engineering tools that are available include control algorithms, such as PID control systems, also known as proportional integral derivative, or fuzzy logic, or neural network, or signal processing such as feeds and FFTs. But there are hundreds of tools available natively in LabVIEW for you to use. And of course, LabVIEW can be used for data visualization. So let's assume we use hardware control to gather lots of data. We use a graphical programming to manipulate that data. And we can visualize that data as well, all with LabVIEW. Nevertheless, LabVIEW can be used for much more than what you see on the screen. Now, I'm going to share with you a case study which shows how LabVIEW is being used to create more advanced and accurate forms of cancer treatment. So using Hadfil or Proton therapy, in this case study shows how you can accelerate different particle beams such as protons or carbon ions and how they can precisely target deep-seated cancer cells. And I think it's wonderful how technology through LabVIEW can be used to improve patients' lives. This next case study I've chosen, I think it is really relevant to the world we're living in today because it shows how energy is helping create technologies such as 5G and other cellular networks. For example, to take on the millimeter wave challenge, Nokia networks teamed up with NI and NI delivered tools and technologies so multiple functional disciplines can collaborate cumulatively rather than independently. They used NI LabVIEW software to facilitate a unified design flow through the development process so the company could rapidly prototype its idea for the millimeter wave mobile access in a fraction of the time of conventional design approaches. Now, let's guide you through to perform your first measurement using LabVIEW. I'm going to show you how to use the NI data acquisition device to acquire temperature measurement using LabVIEW. Now in my system, I have a thermocouple module, an NI9211, which is connected to a single slot compact back chassis. And the single slot compact back chassis is connected directly to my laptop via USB cable. So now, to check that our hardware is connected properly, I opened an NI software called NI Max or NI Measurement and Automation Explorer. It is a free piece of software that shows you all the hardware or devices connected to your computer. So in NI Max, I click on Devices and Interface, search for our module, which is the NI USB 9211A, click on it. Here, we can also change the name of the module, click Save, and Exit. Now, we open LabVIEW. Select a blank VI under the Create Project. When we select bl the blank VI, two windows will pop out. The front panel, which where the user will interface with the program. It could be an HMI, a graphical, or any type of user interfaces. And we have the block diagram, where the user will write and compile the program. Now, 
To acquire and measure the temperature from our thermocouple module input, we need to select the DAC assistant. So we need to go to the block diagram, right click, go to express, select input, DAC assistant. Now our module is a thermocouple input and our aim is to measure the temperature from the thermocouple. So we need to select the acquire signals, go to analog input, select temperature, thermocouple. And here we can see our thermocouple module input, which is the USB 9211A. It has four inputs, AI0, AI1, AI2, and AI3. And now I'm going to select all the inputs and click finish. When we click finish, a small test panel will pop out to configure our DAC assistant. So first we need to click run. And then observe, observe our temperature inputs 0, 1, 2 and 3. And it seems that in the table, temperature 0 is the only channel displaying a realistic number, unlike temperature 1, 2 and 3, because we connected our thermocouple to input 0. So now we can delete temperature 1, 2 and 3 respectively. After that, we can click OK. Now we wait for LabVIEW to build our VI. So our aim is to acquire and measure temperature continuously. So let's start our program. It is very easy and straightforward. First we need to go to the front panel, right click, go to Numeric and select the thermometer. We can also make it bigger. Also, we can right click on the thermometer and select the digital display just to visualize the exact temperature. Now we go to the block diagram and connect our data to the thermometer. And to run our code continuously, we need to put the code inside a while loop. So first, on the block diagram, we select right click, go to structures, while loop, and put our program inside the while loop. Here, we need to add a stop button in order to control our program whenever we want. We can bring the, the stop button to the middle and make it bigger. Now let's run our program. You can see that the thermometer is displaying a 21 degrees Celsius, which is the ambient temperature of the room. Now, if I put my fingers on the thermocouple input, I will notice that the temperature is increasing. And when I remove my fingers from the thermocouple input, the temperature will drop down again until it reaches the ambient temperature. Now we can click stop to end our program. So you saw how easy it was to acquire and measure temperature using LabVIEW. Oh well, yeah, that's it. I hope this video was helpful enough for you to create your first LabVIEW program. If you have any question, please feel free to comment in the section below. Thank you for watching.